had said what would cry. The more and more Jesus takes over my life, the more and more I feel I got to express myself. Because if I doubt my fellow, I'm not doing them justice. <laughs> I'm sure all of you have heard these stories before. But uh, I got a phone call this morning that I talked to somebody that called me and actually they texted me and then they called me or I called them to verify what they were saying. And it was an awesome conversation. Awesome. You know, there's two kinds of people that are here in church today. One that are following, that are following the Lord and already convicted in their heart that Jesus Christ runs them, which that's all he wants. Two is feeling the conviction and feeling the need to be here. That's two people. I'd say you either give them your heart or you're still fighting with the devil. There's no in-betweens. Me, I, uh, I don't know if I did it the right way. But I got three stories, I'll say them fast. But I actually got to meet Christ. And when I say meet him, he did it on his terms, not mine. And when I did this, and I remind you, I've been to seven rehabs, 37 years of alcohol, drugs, you name it. I was awful, I was an awful person, hateful, mean. In fact, I was a disgusting human being. Now, I think it was my third rehab. I was reading the Old Testament. Night after night after night after night. Now, in the meantime, just to let you know, Christ never visited me when I was drunk or a high or anything like that. He did this every time when I was completely sober. So now, by this time, I've been sober for a month and a half. And as I'm reading the Old Testament, Thing this popped up, kept running through my mind. Jesus, why don't you do these miracles that you do in the Old Testament? Why? And that kept going and going and going. In fact, it took over my thoughts. Why? Why? You don't show nothing today, but you you did all this back then. Why not today? Okay, fast forward. Probably two weeks later. Now, as I'm in this rehab, I had to walk in the front of the store, go up three flights of steps, go inside a workroom. And in this workroom, there's probably 15, 20 people up there. As close as these people here, right here. Well, for the first three days, I walked in and I seen this gentleman. Something was different about him. I looked at him. I, he reached out, took my hand and said, humble yourself. I knew something was different about him, didn't know what. Second day, grabs my hand, humble yourself. Third day, I looked at this guy and I thought, man, who is this guy? Third day, grabs my hand, humble yourself. After he did this, I walked up three flights of stairs. I literally got a person here, person here, here, here. And just in my mind, I don't even know why, I said, I screamed, I got it. Sorry about the lifesaver in my mouth, I forgot about it, but I literally screamed, I got it. And right when I said I got it, he did a miracle. Amen. If you can picture this blue here, I'm standing right here with Jesus Christ standing here, looking at my body up in the most beautiful blue sky you could ever imagine. Now I'm telling you, while this is all happening, people are all around me. So I'm standing there looking at my body and I literally watch the Holy Spirit go in my back, out my chest, and it was the most beautiful, I mean, 
I, as a human being, I can't even give words to express how beautiful it was. And when the Holy Spirit came out of my chest, it rolled like this, and I felt it. I'm standing, I'm standing here, looking at my body. I'm feeling him going through my chest. And all of a sudden, boom, once came out of my chest, I literally, from the impact of him coming out of my chest, I fell against the wall behind me and it was gone, I jumped up, and I am literally doing this. Did anybody else just see that? Did anybody else just see that? They're like, what are you talking about? And I said, okay, wow, okay. So in the meantime, I left the rehab, started doing the same stuff I was doing again. Well, this time he was, he was pretty ticked off. He was, I could tell him in his voice. This time, he yelled at me in a thunderous voice. Oh, now every time this has happened, he, it, I can't even tell you the authority or the power that's in front of you when he was talking to me. Amen. I can't, I can't give you words. He said, Jay, must I show you again? But thunder, but it was it was clear as day. That got my attention. So me, part of Jay O'Neill, still doing the same thing. So this time I went to my daughter's wedding. I was doing the same thing, stupidity. Got the wrong directions, thought I knew where I was going, came back. As I came back, my daughter was already out of the church from her wedding. So she got married and I missed her, I missed her wedding. I kind of got through it. I drove, uh, flew back to Indiana. That evening, that evening, everybody went to bed, we got home late. I did not want to go to bed. Still sober, I went into the living room, I sat on the couch, put my head down, and I cried. <laughs> I never felt such hurt like that, ever. Missing your own daughter's wedding, never felt it. My head was down from it, just like this. Just like this. And all of a sudden, the room started getting brighter. My eyes are closed, but the room was brighter, brighter, brighter. Before I knew it, it was so bright, I couldn't open my eyes. There's not a light on the house. It was so bright, I could not open my eyes. And as I'm down like this, I said, it's you, isn't it, Lord? And he says, yes, it is, Jay. And I said, you did this, didn't you? He said, yes, I did. I said, I didn't deserve it, did I? He said, no, you didn't. And I, then I said, uh, if I know you did this, I can accept it, Lord. He says, yes, it was me. I said, then I can accept it. I felt all the pain and the hurt and everything leave. I was still hurting, but it wasn't like it was. So now, I got so bad, a year and a half ago, a year and seven months ago, it got so bad, that I went to the closet, got my gun, went downstairs, sat on the couch. I was really gonna do it. I was done, I couldn't take it no more. Had the gun sitting on my lap. And something in my head says, Jay, make one phone call. Just make one phone call. If that phone call comes through and you get help, then you go get help. If not, I'm going to kill myself. So I made that phone call. I got a hold of my sister. Within, I think it was six hours, I ended up in uh, rehab in uh, Florida. Now, been through several rehabs, and all several rehabs, 
I drank on the way to the airport. I drank at the airport. I drank before I got there. All seven. This time, I stopped. I didn't drink anywhere. In fact, when you get to a rehab and you're totally sober, they're like, you okay? Yeah. You ain't, you ain't drunk? Well, before I went in there, I sat in the chair. They have this, you're sitting in a little room. I sat in that chair and I said, you got me. I put my head down and I said, Lord, you got me. You have 100% of me. I belong to you. Do with me what you want because I can't do it. From that moment on, my life is amazing. Yes. I have no addiction. I have nothing. And I'm telling you, the reason I gotta keep saying this is one, I I don't want to forget what's happened to me. I it, I don't. And if I ever took a drink, <laughs> I would say there is no God. That's what I would be saying. I'm saying this because people he is as real as all of us said to him. Yes. I mean, I pray for my family to get the same miracles that I got. Why he did it for me, I don't know. I mean, I'll find out one day. I want them to see that there is a true Jesus Christ there. I, I can stand up here in front and tell you 100% that there is a Jesus Christ. And there is a hell. And if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you do not do that, you're going to hell. That's as simple as that. Because I have proof, whether I can tell you or not, if you do not have him in your life, you'll go to hell. That's as blunt as I can put it, because it's shown to me. If you do have him in your life, I guarantee you, your life is going to change. Amen. 100%. Amen. That's it, Pastor. Amen.